During a client consultation, we discovered the time he was wasting adding wall tags to his drawing. Every day, he used to copy one of his wall tags around rotate it and fix or copy some of its pointers around. You could imagine how tedious this task could be if there were many items needing this wall tag. Anyway, with some optimization techniques, we were able to simplify my client's life and save plenty of time. Do you wanna know how we did it? All right, so one of the first things that we did uh, in order to simplify my client's life, right, was to um, scale this block to the correct scale, right? Because as you can see, he was using a, a dynamic block, right, that he created it. You can see over here, it was a dynamic block with a couple of uh, polylines or lines to represent his wall tag. But there were problems because you can see the the base point for the block was were, was not on the correct location, which will cause headaches and problems because you can see over here, the text is not on the correct location, right? So again, one of the first things that we did was make sure that, make sure that the um, block has the correct scale. And in order to do that, we utilized uh, the following. This uh, chart over here um, that will help us with setting up some of the scales so he could scale his block more efficient, right? For example, um, we can see over here that the, the block that he was using, uh, if we open it, the property palette, we saw that the scale was 48, right, for this block. So then I proceeded to check on my scale chart, the factor of 48. And so that was for one quarter of an inch um, drawing scale. So I went and checked over here. So all I needed to do then was at 48, he was using four and a half um, inches no, for the notes or text. You can check that or how I checked it was simply double clicking on the attribute and went to the text options and I could see that the height was four inches and a half. So again, checking on my chart over here at 48 a scale factor, he was using four and a half inches. So that will give me uh, 330 seconds for the notes at one, one inch equals one inch. So that was important for the reason that now I could simply, what I did was copy one of his blocks over here, right? Like so. And then I scale it down. So that's the worst thing. The first thing that we did is scale it down to a size of one. Okay, one over here, one also on each direction. And we will have his block like so, right? So then the second thing that we did was once we figured it out the scale, if it was right, and the text size that we needed for his block, right? Uh, we proceeded to explode his block. That's the second thing that we did, right? Using the regular explode command. And the reason why we did it is uh, to utilize again, some of this geometry that he was using as well as 
the correct text with the um, styles that he was using in this case red that was the style and also some of the colors right that he was using so this was to have a reference right so the third thing that we did was um, add a attribute definition to his blog right so for that um, I could simply move this up to keep it as a reference. And what I did is add, again, an attribute definition using the shortcut ATT, right? And so over here for the tag uh, information, I said tag number. For the prompt, I said enter tag number and then for the default this was very important because the wall type that he used the most was w18 so that's what i included on the default right because when he inserted this block uh, this would be the one of the most used wall types w18 so then for the justification, I always like to set to middle center. So it keeps in the middle of the tag. And then the textile red, that's the one that my client used. So for the text height, we set 330 seconds. That was based on the chart and based on the standard of my clients. Again, at 48 scale, he was using 4.5 inches for the text so that means he was using 330 seconds of an inch for the text at one inch equal one inch that means a one one to one scale so 330 seconds that was fine and then i'll simply say okay and i placed it on the middle of this tag like so right so again to match my client's uh, standards i change it to color red like so all right so that's uh, the third thing that we did and the fourth thing that we implemented was convert this into a block so for that we simply select all of the objects and use the shortcut v for block and then uh, we could create the block right at this point we rename it so wall tag um, and then we said okay so at this time we could specify the insertion point and we had to be very strategic here because we needed the insertion point um, on a location that when my client inserts this block it could make sense right he wouldn't have to again move its object around so that's why I picked it in the center of the block, like so, all right? So at this point, this was a regular block. However, if my client could start uh, copying this around and, you know, adding. However, remember that the wall tag that my client was using had these uh, lines over here, right? So I wanted to also have those lines, but being only one single object so the way we did it was implementing a fifth step and the fifth step the fifth thing that we did was um, converting this into a multi-leader and the way we did it was uh, of course i don't need this anymore so let me erase it so the way we converted to a multi-leader was opening the multi-leader style, right? Uh, multi-leader style. And then over here, mm, but we have a question so we can proceed. Uh, and the question is from Dominic. It says, isn't it good standard to set color by layer and have a layer control the color? That's a great, great question, Dominic. However, this depends on the office standards right for my client he always liked to have the 
red color for the text for for his wall tags. So yeah, that depends on a preference, but of course it's a good practice to have it also uh, color by layer. Some other firms like to have it color by block. So there are many options, but again, this is a personal preference for my client, but that's a great question, Dominic. Um, so that's good that you guys are paying attention because I'm gonna ask one question uh, for a big, uh, big giveaway of a contest. So if you are a winner, you will uh, win this AutoCAD course, 100 tricks for you. So, yep. So let's keep moving now. So now that we have the multi-leader uh, dialog box open, I needed to create a, a new style, right? And the way I did it was to start with the standard, which is the one that comes with AutoCAD, right? and then create a brand new by clicking over here. So the name of my multi reader will be uh, wall tag, and then I proceeded to say continue. So at this point, I have this new dialog box. And again, the first thing that I changed was the content. So for the content, um, I changed the multi leader style instead of being M text, I changed it to block, right? And the source block was, uh, it's not in here anymore, but I wanted to reuse the block that we just created. So I checked the user block and then I found my block, which was, I believe, wall tag, right? So it's right here, wall tag. And then I clicked OK. So you can see an update over here, which was uh, the multi leader. So then the next thing I did was go to uh, color and I changed to by layer. So, like so. Next, I went to the leader structure. And then over here, what, what I did is uncheck the automatic, uh, include automatic landing. So once I did that, you can see that there is no landing now over here on the preview for the multi-leader. Uh, that's what we needed. And then another thing that we did was go under the leader format and then change the color uh, to magenta. Again, that was a personal preference for my client because uh, based on his plot style, um, magenta color will, will print lighter. So that's, uh, again, a personal preference. And then finally, for the arrows, arrow head, uh, we didn't need an arrow for this wall tag. So the way we did it is simply under the symbol checked none. And you can see here on the preview that we have no arrow anymore. All right. So that's all we did and simply clicked OK. Of course, uh, we needed to make this current. So I click set current and then click close. All right. So at this point, we created a multi leader. Um, so the next thing that we did, of course, this would be the, I, think, I believe, the sixth. Uh, the sixth thing and what we did was so now that my client will try the multi leader right so like so uh, of course following the instructions um, it says a specify insertion point for block so let's say i needed to specify the insertion point over here like so and then it's saying specify leader arrowhead location. So I will specify here like so. All right. So, but as you can see, uh, there was one problem over here because the size of the multi leader was coming very, very tiny. So this is the, the number 16 that we did, which was fix the scale of the multi leaders, right? And for that, what we did is use the M leader scale option or system variable inside AutoCAD. And 
this will help us to um, always have the multi-liter um, sizes correctly. So what we did is, again, is asking to enter the value and this value always will come from the scale chart over here. So depending on the viewport that you are using, um, so the viewport scale right over here in AutoCAD, let me show you. So that's the viewport over here. So depending on that scale over here, that's what you are gonna use for the multi-liter scale. So, but my client was using one quarter scale for his viewport. So that was 48 factor. So that's what we're gonna use. Mm -hmm. So M um, liter scale. And again, we set it to 48 and press enter. So once we did that and we try it again, the multi-liter, so we can see that the scale was not a problem anymore. It came to the correct size. So at this point it says specify insertion point. So he could simply click like so, and then add his arrow either here or either down like so, right? So that was very easy for my client to do, right? To start adding wall tax. However, there was another uh, problem that was whenever he needed to add another um, liter. So for instance, if he needed to add, let's say a line over here to this other wall, he will have to add liter, right? And then point like so quickly. However, this didn't look right because this line is supposed to go from the middle, right? Like so. So that's the number seven thing that we did was fix this issue. And the way we did it was opening, uh, before we have a comment on the chat, uh, says Rumi Rockstar, good to hear. And it is so clear to understand. Also, thanks a lot, sir. Uh, thank you Rumi for uh, still being here to, with us today. And let's keep moving. So again, the number seven thing that we did was to fix this issue, right? Uh, was opening the multi-liter style uh, dialog box. And then there was a, of course, after uh, clicking modify, there was a nice option over here under content uh, that says, attachment insertion point. So you can see that the attachment is going from this side, but we want it to go from the center. So what we did was expand this and click insertion point and take a look what's gonna happen over here on the preview once I do that. So insertion point and boom, you can see that now it's gonna come from the center of our multi-liter. So all I did was click okay and simply hit close. And boom, you can see now how nice and clean he looks. So again, at this point, uh, again, he could simply say multi-liter or he could also simply use the add um, selected option, right? And simply select this block and then start implementing some of his wall tags like so and of course keep adding leaders like so. See how easy it was to add um, some of these wall tags. So my client was very happy because now uh, he doesn't have to waste time adding door tags and it's even fun, right? It's not tedious anymore. It's so easy to uh, start adding these wall tags. He could simply change whatever he need at this point, maybe, um, w3 and so on all right so yeah here you have it what do you think about this way of adding water